This is the Hearst Tower in New York. It's also a diagrid structure, but it's a more conventional rectilinear architecture. And this building is a kind of a, an odd mongrel. The um, architectural problem was to make a high rise, but the f street level facade was under historical protection, so they couldn't, they couldn't demolish that. So Foster stuck this high rise in the middle of the, the historical facade. And I think actually from street level, it works much better than it does from this view. And I'm sure the interior is, is also um, is quite nice. I haven't been there myself. So I modeled this. Uh, I don't expect you to read this, but I'm showing it uh, just to, to give you some idea of the volume of code. It's not very much. The only tricky part was making the floors undulate um, to accommodate the diagrid structure. So here's my basic model. And now I started exploring. and this model is produced by taking a floor cross-section and just repeating it this way by translation. So here in the code that's in red, I took that floor, I translated it instead of rotating, uh, uh, instead of translating it vertically, I translated it horizontally and then rotated it. So that, of course, gives me a, a torus structure like this. You know, the, the top and the bottom don't meet up very well and it's kind of awkward, so I just cranked up the number of floors from 36 to 160, say, and I get this structure. There we go. Uh, which is kind of interesting. The, the diagrid frame wrapping around the torus I like. And then um, I added another rotation. So this time I translate out and I rotate a little bit and then rotate around the center. And that gives me a, this torus structure. And I love this, the, the interaction of the diagrid frame with the winding torus I think is just, just gorgeous. So I was thinking about this. What do you do with a structure like this? I took out the floors because they're not very useful in this configuration. Um, and uh, I really like the idea of, a, of an art gallery. You, know, you walk around the gallery, and since it's a Mobius, you walk around one side, and you're on the ceiling then once you go all the way around. So I decided I have to put it out in space. And uh, so I, um, I tweaked the, the rendering a little bit, and I and um, added some floors that wrap around the structure, Mobius floors. And then I added a star field, uh, so it looks like it's out in space. The star field is actually, um, I, just, I just mapped random points with random intensities onto a sphere which surrounds the model. And uh, so now I needed to put some figures and some artwork into my gallery. Because of the transparency in that other model, it's not very interactive, so I made this simplified model. And uh, I took out the, the transparent bits and just left the frame. So this is something that I can manipulate nicely. And uh, then I went to the web. There's lots of um, free architectural silhouettes you can grab. I pulled in some of those. I picked figures out of the PDF and stuck them in this array. I wrote a little function called prep figure, which will normalize things and position things in a, in a canonical place. And then I extruded those, and now I, have these, and now I have these cookie cutter people that I can put in my model. OK, and then the artwork. So for the artwork, I went to our example data and pulled out this, the mandrel image. Um, I wanted some, some abstract artwork. So I pulled out some pieces of that and applied some color mapping. And then I used um, the vertex functions to map these on these image pieces onto planes in 3D. This will be much simpler now in version 8 when we have the, the texture mapping. It would have saved me a lot of time, but I didn't have that luxury. So now I have all the pieces. If you just try to position these things in your model by guessing coordinates, you're going to take forever. So I made a rig, which essentially gave me some sort of digital rails which ran through my structure and, and parameters then that I could position things along these rails and adjust the orientations. And I put them all together then uh, to make this rendering of the interior. So that was fun, but what I was really interested in, I wanted to get some impression of what it was like to move through this space. So, um, so I made a fly through. And the way I did that was um, with this manipulate. So I stuck. Um, a red sphere indicating the camera position and a, a uh, vector indicating camera vertical and the viewpoint. Uh, in version, I think it was version 7, 
the view options for Graphics 3D made it much easier to produce fly-throughs than it had been in the past. Um, so I took advantage of that. So I have the, the camera view on the left, I have the, what the camera is seeing on the right, and then I could play with the, with the parameters here, the view angle, and so forth to, to find a route for the camera. Right. And then I put that all together into this animation. Mm -hmm.